This video today is brought to you by me, Tanya J. Laird. I hope you find this video useful and helpful. I am a graduate student in civil engineering working my way through a doctoral program. I do offer online tutoring in a variety of engineering courses, as well as more fundamental topics such as mathematics, physics, and chemistry. If you're interested, see the details in the comments below. And now, on with the lecture. Hello, and welcome to another lovely session of Civil Engineering with Tanya J. Laird. This is going to be the sixth lecture in the video series where we explore uh, functions of SMATH and working with SMATH. And in this particular video, we are going to be looking at some of the tools within SMATH to solve individual equations and to solve systems of equations uh, using some of the various tools that uh, we have available in the program. The first thing I would like to do is to look at some of SMATH's symbolic manipulation and representation. So um, everything we've looked at previously, we have been uh, having uh, variables defined in terms of specific numbers with units or some with units or without units, but we've been doing everything uh, with uh, actual uh, quantities associated with them. We haven't had any kind of real symbolic uh, representation here. So uh, let's go ahead and see what SMath can do. Let's say that uh, y is equal to x. Let's go ahead and define y instead of equal to a, uh, a number or a unit or some combination of abo the above, let's just say that y is equal to x. So uh, now we have done something like this before, especially in the context of uh, later giving x a value, say something like 3 feet, we could then go and have y output again, and we would have a, another length unit. Uh, and that's, a, that's the kind of thing we've looked at before. Now, like I've said, SMath is capable of some limited uh, uh, symbolic representation and symbolic uh, solving or and symbolic manipulation. So let's go ahead and give this a try. If I then define another function, f is defined as, uh, let's do something, do a function in terms of y. So I'm gonna put down, oh, I don't know, 4y to the third minus, oh, I don't want the, that equals there yet minus 3y plus 2. Okay, so if I then ask it to display a value, if I use, if I press the equal sign, what is that going to do? When I press the equal sign in SMath, I'm asking it to evaluate this function uh, numerically or to produce a value and work through its various unit conversion uh, uh, algorithms to produce a final single numerical result. However, that's not going to work here because we don't actually have a numerical value for x we just, or a numerical value for y. We just have everything in terms of raw variables. So if I try to press my equal sign here, it's going to produce an error saying x is not defined. It we can see here that it recognizes that y is actually equal to x, but nowhere is it actually seeing a value for x which when I'm asking, when I'm pressing the, just a, when I'm entering just a simple equal sign is what it's asking for. This one again here, simply this equal sign here can be interpreted as uh, evaluate and specifically numerically evaluate. So let's, uh, let's go back and get rid of that. Now, what can I do? Well, there is another option available. And if you go up to your menu here, you'll see evaluate symbolically, and we can either use the button in the, uh, er, the arithmetic menu here, or we can go up and press uh, control period. So if we go on our keyboard, I'm going to press uh, control period, and that will produce a uh, output that is in terms of X. So we now see that within uh, SMath's memory, it is now uh, storing uh, because it knows y is equal to x, it has now substituted x uh, in for y everywhere in that equation, and then it has gone and uh, done a little bit of uh, manipulation of it as well. Okay, so what else can we do? Well, another option would be to define it, uh, define y as a simple function. So we could define y, oh, let's define it as 5x squared. Now, if I go and... Uh, ask it to reevaluate f. I can just, I don't want to redefine f, but I just want to basically do the equivalent of, or the symbolic equivalent of previously when I would have uh, f displayed on another line using the reevaluate command. However, what I'm going to go up here is, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here and again uh, request it to evaluate symbolically rather than evaluate numerically. Or again, I can press the control period 
uh, let's see here, control period. And it has now gone and uh, done that. Although, let's see, we have uh, some sort of error here because we look at this, this should produce uh, a, a result that actually takes into account this, um, this new value for y. So what we actually need to do is, we're not gonna be able to do that. Um, we need, because we're actually putting in a new value for y, we actually, just like we looked at previously, and just as we saw previously, we do need to reevaluate f. So again, uh, let me undo the deletion of that. Here, I just asked it to display f. And uh, because uh, we didn't ask it to reevaluate f, uh, all it did was spit out the previous uh, symbolic value that it calculated. So that's not going to work. So instead, we're going to have to go back. If we want a new value or a new, a new expression for f, we're going to have to copy this again, put it down here, and then we can uh, use our evaluate symbolically option. And now we have our uh, we have an expression uh, for uh, f with x substituted into it. So we can see that it does have some uh, limited symbolic manipulation capability. So it didn't do a full expansion. It did sort of a partial expansion uh, according to some rules it has built into it. But it did successfully uh, take this to the third power and expand that out. So let's look at some other things uh, this can do. So another option. Let's say I have a quantity a. And I'm going to define this as 2 times x minus 3. And then b, I'm going to define as 3x minus 7. So these would be like two factors in a quadratic equation. So let's say I define, let's then define f as equal to a times b. So I, uh, if, uh, so what I'm essentially doing is I'm multiplying this factor by another. And let's see how SMath handles this if I ask it to evaluate symbolically. Well, we see here that it didn't actually perform an expansion. It kept things factored. So SMath is going to have a tendency to keep things factored uh, in certain cases, and it's not going to be able to, it doesn't actually have a built-in um, expansion function like you might have in some other programs. Uh, the key to keep in mind is that while SMath is capable of some limited symbolic uh, evaluation, it is largely a numerical program. So you can do some limited work like this, and, just, and this can be particularly useful if you want to see... Um, where I think this would be particularly useful is if you had a... Uh, let's say you had some very long equation, and you wanted to see what kind of actual substitutions were being carried through. You could put a... You, if you had like, you know, a 10 equations or something like that, each referencing one another, and you were having trouble uh, determining where a final value was coming from. Let's say you were proofing a, your, your worksheet and you wanted to know where the error, er, error was originated. Something like this could be useful if you could just put in an initial value for, if you could just put a x in for a key initial value and then let it work its way through. And then you could perhaps figure out, uh, you could perhaps use that uh, to see if it was correctly uh, manipulating variables and substitute, or I shouldn't say if it's correctly uh, manipulating variables, I should say you could use that to determine if your worksheet was set up correctly. Um, and so there may be some applications for this in um, more uh, engineering settings. Next, I would like to look at the solve function within SMath. So I'm going to create another section here, uh, just label this solve. I want to explore some of the uh, uses for this and uh, some of the limitations and uh, configurations that you might need to make. Okay, the solve function. Um, the solve function is useful for finding the real roots of uh, certain ex functions, expressions, etc. So um, let's go ahead and give this a try. And I want to first start out by using this to solve for the roots of something uh, that we can easily verify. So let's go ahead and define a function x, uh, an f of x function. And I'm going to define this in terms of, uh, I'm going to use a simple, quadrat a simple quadratic equation. Let's do x squared, oh, let's see, x squared plus 3x plus 2. So this should be easily factorable. Take out the factors of uh, 2, 2, and 1, and that adds together to be 3. So the roots of this should be uh, 2 and 1. Or actually, sorry, negative 2 and negative 1. So let's go ahead and try to use the solve function. And I'll go ahead and just define this maybe as, oh, let's define this as roots. 
Uh, maybe I actually don't want to do that because that, we're going to use a function later that's very similar to that, that's named very similar to that. So uh, I'm just going to call this variable, this function, uh, I'll just define this as, oh, maybe D for whatever reason. Okay, so I'm going to pull up the, if we look, let's look in the menu for the solve function. Now there's two variations of this. You can use uh, the two variants or the four variants. And this is basically just saying, okay, whether it's going to by default pop up a certain number of inputs of two or four. Uh, the first input is going to be your expression, and the second is going to be the variable that you're solving for. The second one is going to be, uh, you can use if you want to input uh, essentially guesses or bounds. And so, the, uh, again, uh, as we mentioned earlier, uh, SMath is primarily about numerical uh, solving. It's about, it can do some limited uh, symbolic manipulation, but it is primarily a numerical uh, tech, a numerical program. So everything it's going to do is going to be using numerical methods of various sorts to solve these. And so it can be useful in certain cases to provide uh, uh, basically uh, an interval. So what it's going to do is it's going to look between these two numbers for uh, certain roots. So for now, let's just do the uh, two here, the, the second option. And uh, let's see. So let's explore this and see what happens if I just put in f of x without any equals, without it being equal to zero, for example. We'll be able to solve that. Let's see what that equals. And it is able to do that. So if you do not enter any um, equal sign here, if you don't, if you just use this as an expression rather than a full equation, it's just going to solve for the roots of it when this is equal to zero. However, if it would also work if I wanted to put in a different value, let's say, if, let's say this, I wanted this thing, uh, this f of x to be equal to six. Now, how might we try this? So if I just press equals an equal sign here, uh, that's not actually going to work. Uh, because this it, it doesn't accept an equal sign as an input within the solve function. Instead, I have to go up here to the Boolean equal to value, where I'm defining f of x as equal, or, or I'm saying in this command that I want to solve f of x when it's equal to a certain number. So let's see what happens when it's equal to six. It is able to solve that, and if you're familiar with your, if you think back to your uh, algebra and uh, algebra two and that kind of thing. Uh, this does make sense that this would just shift the values, uh, uh, you know, just translate them uh, to the left on the on a number line. Okay, so that's fine. And again, as a just as a reminder, if I want to use the equals within there, I can't use uh, my normal equal sign, which which I'm which is basically asking uh, Smath to evaluate something, and I don't want to use my uh, define as because that's not going to work very well either. I don't want to have a definition within a definition. Uh, instead, I'm going to use this Boolean uh, equal to, or simply, plus, or simply press control equal sign. And then that will define it as eight, for example. If I define this as equal to eight, then we'll go and solve for uh, f of x. Uh, it'll solve x squared plus three x plus two is equal to eight. All right, so there is that. Okay, and of course, if I don't put anything in the, in the equals, if I just put f of x, it will simply solve for the roots um, with, as, with this equal to zero. Now, uh, what other considerations do we have? So um, we could use this as a, uh, we could, let's, let's explore what this looks like if we use the bounds. So um, I'm gonna put a, maybe a, uh, mm, let's do c is equal to solve. Let's also do f of x again, except this time I'm going to put, I'm going to keep putting in terms. I have my f of x, comma x. Again, this is saying that I want to solve for uh, the roots of x, or f of x, when it's equal to zero. And I'm solving in terms of the variable x. And I want to solve a, I want to solve this, I want to, I want to tell Asmath to search within certain bounds. So if I tell it to search negative three to three, it shouldn't have a problem. And it finds the roots just fine. However, if I tell it to search, uh, let's say negative, oh, actually let's test the equal to bounds. What if I tell it to search uh, negative one, actually I probably should do the lower one first. What if I tell it to search uh, negative two to negative one? 
Huh, it's only finding uh, the negative two. Interesting. Okay, so it does have some problems sometimes if you're asking it to solve for um, roots, and one of the bounds is exactly on one of the solutions. Okay, so what happens if next I ask it to solve uh, a to solve for the roots within bounds that are actually uh, that actually exclude all of the real solutions? So let's go ahead and give that a try. I'm going to search on the interval zero comma two, and no solutions were found. If it pops out just a red box, that means no solutions were found, or you entered something wrong in the syntax. So uh, no real solutions were found here. Now look what happens if I, so there's that, but uh, look what happens if I, let's, I, I wanna show something else. And I wanna show that uh, in the simpler, uh, in the simpler form. So if you don't put bounds on it, it's just going to search, uh, it's going to search for roots uh, on the number line uh, and it will just search until it finds them. However, it's not going to search negative infinity to positive infinity. Uh, Smath actually is, um, it, again, it ha it's a numerical program, but it's kind of a little interesting in that it asks you to, uh, it, it is only going to search for roots within certain well-defined bounds. And you, to, to, uh, to, if you don't want to define those bounds within the solve function, another way to do that is to go up to your global options. And if you go to calculation, there's a whole bunch of options that we may look at later. But if when you're solving for the roots, it's only gonna look for things within whatever range you define here. So let's see what happens if, just let's just verify this is still working. Oh, well actually we did, it's still working just fine. So let's go up here and say, okay, only look for roots in the range of zero to 20 instead of negative 20 to 20. And let's have this, uh, maybe I'll delete that and then put that back. So if I ask it to solve f of x comma x now, it's not able to find real roots. It's a, oh, and also um, if you want to distinguish between the case of you entering something incorrectly in the syntax or no actual real roots being found, you can hover your mouse over the dialog box and it's gonna pop up this little uh, alt text showing no real roots. So it thinks there's no real roots to the equation x squared plus three x plus two. When in fact, we know from you know trivial algebra one that this equation does have roots of negative one and negative two. And the reason for that was because we went up to the options here and told it only look in the range of zero to 20. Now, if I go back and say, okay, actually search from negative 20 to 20, uh, and I maybe, uh, if I, let's see, let's try reevaluating this. Yeah, if I press reevaluate, it'll reevaluate the whole sheet. And now it finds the roots. So. Now, why would it have this? Now, some programs might not have any kind of bounds at all in the uh, in what values they search for, but SMath is designed to try to, especially when you get to some of the larger uh, worksheets, it can get bogged down sometimes with some calculations. And also, this is really meant a lot of times for engineering applications. So there may be cases where, there may be many cases in engineering where you're solving for uh, roots in a sheet and you already know some very reasonable values for what your functions, uh, for whatever for whatever your function represents. There could, you could in your mind already know some very um, reasonable ranges of what these values could actually mean or what, they, what, the, what values they could actually take. Um, if you're solving for the stress in a beam, for example, um, if you're doing like a bending analysis or something, and if your units are in KSI, uh, kips per square inch, uh, if I am solving for the stress in a beam, uh, I know that I shouldn't have a negative stress unless I'm loading it backwards or something. Um, I also know that the if I, if I have a, an equation that I'm trying to, for some reason, solve for the allowable stress in something made of steel, I don't need to worry that the... Uh, I don't need to worry that the stress, the level stress is actually like a thousand KSI or something because typical steels have uh, upper limits on their bending stress or sorry, upper limits on their uh, ultimate stress at around uh, between 50 and 100 KSI, depending on the actual alloy. So I, if I was trying to solve, if I was trying to use an equation to solve for the required ultimate strength of steel for a given application, I could put in these options saying, okay, 
uh, ignore the negative that doesn't make any sense in my context here and I could put an upper bound of 200 or something because that would still be because I wouldn't be interested in any values beyond that because um, steals aren't commonly available in those kinds of strengths. So uh, again, these are highly configurable to what your particular uh, situation is, but it is something you need to be aware of. If you're using the solve function, you do need to be very careful with the bounds because as we saw here, if we put this as positive, suddenly this thing will not be finding any real roots because we uh, told it that to only look at positive values and this function has only negative real roots. All right, so what else could we do with this? Um, now, let's see here, what could we do? Let's go and put this back at negative 20 so we get some real roots again and we'll reevaluate it. And now we have the roots at negative, uh, at negative two and two. So will it then recognize this as a vector? Yes, it does. So it uh, because I had defined C as the results of this solve function, I now have C as a vector. And I could use some of the techniques we looked at in uh, the previous lecture, the one on matrices and vectors. I could extract individual values from this, and then I could go and use those in further calculations. All right, let us next consider the roots function in uh, SMAP. So go ahead and create another text box and label this roots. Oh, and then maybe make this italic, why not? I like a nice little section label. Okay, so the roots function is uh, useful for a few things. Uh, first of all, it is very powerful and that can work with any kind of equation, whether linear, nonlinear, uh, polynomial, non-polynomial. You can put in essentially any, equ any equation as complex as you can, um, as you can think of, and it will do its best to, to numerically solve for this, uh, for uh, the roots of this equation, or more specifically, for a given root, for a, a single root. So what is interesting about the roots function is that it, it is going to output just one root um, if you're only asking it to solve in terms of a single variable. So let's take a look at that. So let's say we have uh, this equation. Let's go back to our f of x is x squared plus 3x plus 2. Just copy that so we have a fresh copy of it, make sure everything is good in S mass memory. Although we probably really don't need that. So I'm going to say R1, uh, which is going to be a, a representation of the first root of this. Uh, I'm going to pull up the roots function. Rots, lovely. Um, roots of f of x. And I want, I'm going to tell it to solve for the roots in terms of x. And if we wanted to, we could put another Boolean equals sign here and then put a different value in for that. But by default, when we have roots, we already have the equation solved for, uh, for being equal to zero. So we can just use the roots function as is. Now, what happens if we just ask this to solve for the roots of f of x here? It's going to output negative one. Interesting. So we can see immediately that there are some differences between uh, roots and uh, solve. And so uh, solve again is going to be looking for, uh, is going to be open to looking for uh, more than one solution. And um, that has pluses and minuses. Uh, but uh, uh, one of the one of the advantages of the roots function is that it's able to work with uh, much more complex equations in some instances. So uh, the roots function here, or the root, yeah, the roots function here, roots command, whatever you want to call it, um, by default, it's just going to st probably start at zero and then search around until it finds a uh, root. And that is why negative one came about first. However, roots does have another option and that is to provide a third input on this. It, and that would be our uh, the initial guess. So if you put a third argument in, uh, you are telling SMATH where you want the search to start for a root. So if I put R1 now, is roots of f of x, again, in terms of x, and uh, let's put it zero, let's see what happens. It gets the same negative one. However, what if I tell it to look at negative one? It gets the same negative one. It checks the first value I give it, and it's like, oh, what do you know, I'm already here. However, what happens if I put in, the, for the initial guess, negative, oh, if I put in negative three? Suddenly now, it's going to find the actual, uh, or, or to find this, it's suddenly now, it's going to find the second root. 
And I guess I can go ahead and just call that R2 after that. So um, roots is only going to output a single uh, a single output for uh, each of its uh, the variables that you ask it to solve for. However, as we'll see uh, shortly, uh, the roots function is one of the main benefits of it. Uh, even though it is limited to only one output per uh, variable that you're solving for, it is very useful for solving systems of equations, which is what we'll look at next. Next, let us see how the roots function could be used to solve for the intersection of two equations. So I'm going to I'm going to use two equations that uh, I know very easily how to solve for the uh, intersect of, or, or I should say the intersections of, not just the one but the two. Uh, I'm going to use these two functions. Uh, I'll, basically, I want to solve for the uh, intersections of two parabolas. I'll go ahead and just enter these in a text box so it doesn't try to uh, uh, do any kind of uh, calculations on them. I'm going to use negative. I want to know where these two parabolas intersect. Negative two x squared plus 4 and y equals x squared minus 4. So this will be a downward, uh, uh, a concave down parabola with its uh, vertex in above 0 at, uh, yeah, at 4. And then this will be an upward pointing parabola with its, uh, with its uh, vertex below the x-axis. So uh, I know these two should intercept or should intersect right at a uh, plus or minus square root of two. If you think back to your conic sections or to your just uh, algebra one, uh, whatever you, uh, wherever you may have last seen uh, working with parabolas. So let's see how we can use the roots function to solve for this. So um, as we saw just a minute ago, the roots function will by default return a single uh, variable, or sorry, not a single variable, a single value. So if we want a, uh, if we want more than one value, uh, we need to solve, we need to use a, uh, if we want it to output more than one value, we need to use a vector form of this, of this command. So let me show you what I mean by this. I could say, let me go ahead and define uh, maybe just R3 is the roots, or is equal to the roots, or is defined as the roots. So, um, well, actually, first of all, what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to define some functions that I can actually solve for the intersections of. So I'm going to call F1. Now, what we're going to need to do for this is we are going to need to um, solve these in, ter uh, to, in terms of zero. Not, well, not in terms of zero, we need to solve these for zero. So I'm going to get this one, or when I solve this first one for zero, this is going to be negative x squared plus 4x minus y, and this is going to be x squared minus 4 uh, minus y. So I'm going to have my first function be negative x squared uh, plus 4 minus y, and then f2 is going to be uh, x squared uh, minus 4 minus y. Again, uh, the roots function is built assuming this is equal, to, everything is equal to 0. You may be able to put another equals in there just like you did the solve function, but by default it's built to assume that everything is equal to 0. Okay, so what I want to do now is instead of just putting f1 or f2 or whatever we might have, oh, also another thing, I want to have an x comma y uh, maybe not strictly necessary, but I feel better if that's there. So uh, we want to do this in terms of uh, vectors. And specifically where a vector, will, there, there will be vectors for each equation. And then for each of the variables that we're solving for. So if I have f of x here, uh, if you look at the previous one, we we're dealing with just one value. We had a, um, we had just f of x. But I'm working with two equations here, so I need to insert a uh, vector or a 2 by 1 matrix. So I'm going to insert a 2 by 1 matrix, a vector for the first input, and this is going to be f1, which is in terms of x and y. And the next one I'll have is f2 in terms of x and y. And I'm going to put down a comma. Uh, once I, yeah, I'm going to put down a comma here. And I'm going to tell SMath now which variables I want to solve in terms of. I want to solve for the roots in terms of. So I'm going to input another 2 by 1 matrix, or aka a vector. And this is going to be my variable vector. So I'm going to have x 
uh, just X and Y. And then uh, we have an option to either put a guess or not. So let's see what happens if we first just don't have any kind of guess, initial value. It's going to output, uh, let's see, uh, 2 and 0. Hmm. Uh, let's see. And actually, yes, that, that should be correct. So, um, oh, I was a little mistaken earlier. I said those are going to be going to uh, intersect at uh, uh, square root 2. Well, anyway, uh, so if we, if we look through the math here, these should intersect right at, um, let's see, if I add those, negative 8. Uh, Yeah, 2x squared, uh, out of 2x squared, and then 8, so yeah, plus or minus 2, sorry, should be the solution. May have been a little bit mistaken earlier when I said uh, square root of 2, uh, 2 square root of 2, 6, 1 half dozen the other. It's just a, it's just a uh, square root. Um, it's practically the same thing, close enough for government work, um, et cetera, <laughs> et cetera. Okay, so that's all well and good, and what, it is, what this is telling us is that one of the roots of this equation, it's not telling us that the intersection... Uh, it's not telling us that these pass through the x-axis at 2 and 0. No, rather this is telling us that one of the roots of this, of this set of functions is 2, 0. And these functions do meet each other exactly at negative 2, 0 and 2, 0, so that makes sense. However, just like with our previous use of the roots function, we need to provide some sort of guess if we want to find uh, roots other than the first root uh, smath finds. So let me go ahead and do that. Now, if I, and with all of this, we're going to have to use uh, two, um, we're going to have to use a vector form for this. So I'm going to input another matrix, another two by one matrix. And as a reminder how I'm pulling that little menu up, I can either go to the insert, uh, I can either go to insert matrix, or I can just press control M. I've just been using the hotkey control M. So now I'm going to give it an initial guess point. So I could go and say, okay, what about, 3 comma 0 for example. Will that work? Oh, and what do you know? It finds the closest one. It finds the one we gave it, or the one it initially found. So no surprise there. However, if I put in negative 3 comma 0, it's going to find the negative root. So uh, especially on this one, uh, when you're dealing with multiple variables, um, when you're trying to find like an ordered pair of a solution, uh, it is very useful to provide an, an initial guess. Now, what happens if we provide initial guess in the while? That affect anything? Well, we see that it might, uh, it just like the with the x, it might produce a, uh, it might have help you select, or it might result in you selecting, or smath finding a different one of the two solutions. But uh, it can help you find. Uh, it, basically, it'll look for the closest one to that point. So that's basically how you use the roots function to solve for the intersection of two, th of two equations. And if you are particularly clever, there might be some way to use this kind, of, um, this kind of input to actually solve for both roots of a, uh, of a uh, single function. But uh, anyway, that's, uh, I suppose you could do that if you're really clever. But uh, I would rather, I'm, I'm usually more comfortable just using the guess for that. Finally, the last function that I would like to look at is the polyroots function. Uh, and this is more, this is simultaneously more powerful but less flexible than some of the, than the other commands we've looked at, the solve and the roots function. So I'm going to put in a little, oh, little text box again here, polyroots. So when we say polyroots, we're not, look, we're not talking about a function that solves for multiple roots. Um, well, I suppose we are actually in a way. What this specifically is designed to do is to solve for the roots of a polynomial. Now, um, the roots function is very useful in that it can solve, it will numerically try to solve for the real roots of almost any kind of function. I've been using a polynomial here, but I can have a cosine in there. I can have a, I can have a function that involves a hyperbolic tangent if I wanted to. I can have exponential, I can have logarithms. I can have anything I want in here. But because it because the roots function is so flexible, the downside of it is that it's only going to solve for one thing at a time or one value at a time. Basically, this is not directly solving for any kind of um, solution. What it's doing is it's just starting the roots function is just starting at your guess point and just kind of blindly stumbling around, seeing if it will get closer or further away from a value that solves the uh, equation you gave it. So. If you try, if you gave it negative three two initially, 
Okay, it first tries negative 3 and 2 sees, and sees if that produces an acceptable solution to a certain number of decimal places. And if that doesn't work, then what it's going to do is, okay, let's try searching upward and then, uh, on x. So and then maybe it goes to negative 3.001. And then it sort of guesses, okay, then, then, it's, then it does the math and th that you gave it. And it says, okay, did that get me closer or further from solving the conditions of this equation? If it's further, it might try, if it's closer, it'll keep searching that direction. If it is um, further, it will try going in the opposite direction. This is just basic uh, numerical optimization, solver functions, um, solver techniques, etc. And you see this implemented in a lot of computer programs. Polyroots, however, is uh, a little more powerful in that it will tell you the exact uh, number, it'll tell you using one function and one command, the full uh, set of roots for a for the type of thing that it's meant to solve. And it's also capable of solving um, imaginary roots as well as real roots. So the roots function is more flexible in the sense that you can give it any equation, but the trade-off of that is that it's only going to be able to give you one number at a time, and it's high and which which solution that you get is going to be highly dependent on where your initial point is. So if you have a very complicated function, it's entirely possible that you're going to miss some of the uh, actual solutions to it, just depending on where you put your initial guess. Now, polyroots, as you might have guessed by now, is a specific um, a specific uh, solver that is meant to solve for the roots of polynomials. So polynomials, again, if, you're, uh, if you've uh, forgotten your basic math, is anything of the form, uh, the summation of the form, anything that is uh, a series of summations of anything like a x to the b. So this would be like a cubic function, a quadratic function, a quartic function, anything like that, as long as it has uh, anything with positive, it's basically a, the formal definition of a polynomial might be um, a function whose uh, who is the, that is the summation of a series of terms, each of which has a single variable and a uh, single positive uh, whole number uh, power. Anyway, hopefully, I'll know what a polynomial is. But uh, polyroots is limited to polynomials. Now, because that's so limited, it, it actually has a very interesting input, and in that its input is actually very simple. So if let's say I want to solve for the roots of the equation, um, let's pull up a text box and I'll just write some very interesting um, complicated polynomial. So I'm going to do 7x to the sixth, oh, minus 5x to the fourth, plus 3x squared, plus um, maybe do negative uh, 6x and then plus, I don't know, 5. And notice I purposely left out the to the third power. I purposely left out the third power term. And I wanted to do that so we can uh, show how this uh, actually functions. OK, or how to handle those. So previously, uh, when we've looked at uh, the, in the previous examples of uh, solving uh, equations with S math here, we have gone and actually had to define a function and then then it will then that function becomes an input and then we use that uh, within the uh, sol whatever solving command we're using. In polyroots, we do not enter a function at all. The input is actually just an array corresponding to the coefficients of this polynomial. So um, maybe I'll def I might define a, uh, I'll go ahead and define a, a term that's coefficients. And I want to create, uh, now I've got to be very careful to create this as a vector. And as we learned previously in lecture, in the previous lecture, a vector in SMath, again, is a, uh, a matrix with one column. So I'm going to insert a, uh, insert a, uh, a vector here. And oh, one column. Now we need to figure out how many uh, rows we need. So you might be tempted to say, okay, it's a we. It might be tempted to say, okay, in terms of rows, well, we ha let's just do the same number of terms, or right, well, let's just do the same number of rows. So we have number of terms. We have one, two, three, four, five. So we might think, oh, we, we could we only need four, or sorry, we only need five uh, terms, so five rows. That is not correct. We are going to need one row for each and every power in this polynomial. Even if that has a even if that power has a coefficient of zero in front of it, we need that um, that uh, a row for that particular uh, power. So 
Or in other words, if you want to know how many uh, rows to include in your polyroots uh, matrix, uh, polyroots coefficient matrix, it's just the power plus one. So oh, that went down here. So the first one's going to be, so again, this is going to be a vector representing the coefficients of the polynomial we're trying to solve. The first one is 7, no surprise there. Now you might be tempted to put negative 5 here, but that would be incorrect. Instead, we want our negative 5 here, and this row here will represent the fifth power term. And the coefficient on the fifth power term is uh it's well it's not there but if we remember some if we think back to our uh, math education we know that that coefficient is actually zero uh let's see same thing for the third power so again these are going to be the, the sixth power the fifth the fourth the third the second the first and the zero power or the constant and so here for the third power we're going to put zero and then um for the second power we're going to put three uh, for the first, we're going to put negative 6. If I can manage to enter things properly. Oh, I'm getting all sorts of fun here. Um, negative 6, there we go. Managed to tame S math. S maths inputs, if you're not careful, uh, admittedly are uh, and can be a bit finicky. And if you play with S math enough and uh, toy around with it enough and experiment with enough, you'll eventually get the hang of it. But some of its inputs and cursor functions can be a little bit odd. Okay, so just to double check, our sixth power is seven, then we have a zero for the fifth, a negative five for the fourth, a zero for the third, a three for the second, a negative six for the first, and a five for the zeroth power or the coefficient term. Good, okay. And now I'm going to define a new function. I'll just call this maybe r4 for our fourth um, roots function. And I'm gonna pull up the command polyroots. And if you look at the instructions here, it says uh, polyroots of a vector returns the roots of the polynomial whose coefficients are in vector. And we can go ahead and just tell it, uh, just reference the coefficient. And let's see what happens. Ah, interesting. In this case, at least, it does have six roots. Well, a polynomial always have roots equal to its number, equal to its power. Um, it equal actually I should say equal to its highest power or its order. This is a sixth degree. Uh, this is a sixth degree or a sixth uh, order polynomial, and so uh, we should expect uh, six uh, solutions or six roots. However, it just uh, again because I just chose these numbers out of a hat, uh, well not a literal hat, just out of uh, out of thin air. Um, all of the roots actually turned out to be imaginary. But notice this is actually the first case we've seen of a command that will actually give us imaginary roots in terms of i. So that is another one of the advantages of the polyroots function. Because it's not just started, it's not just starting at a, a real value and kind of stumbling around blind looking for a, for a, a solution to converge to zero, uh, it has a, it can use some of the algorithms that you, that you may have learned for solving polynomials to actually produce a direct solution for these. And so, uh, again, here, it is able to directly solve for all of the um, roots of this polynomial, even though they are imaginary. So again, that's the basic idea of the polyroots function. It's relatively simple, but um, and, it is, and it, its input is a little bit odd, compared, especially compared to the simplicity of the solve function input, but or the solve command input, but it is very, and it is a little limited in that it only works with polynomials, but it is more powerful in that it will give you all of the roots immediately. It doesn't require any kind of guessing, initial values, bounds, etc. It doesn't end, uh, and it will work with both real and imaginary uh, roots. Okay, so I hope you found this lecture uh, enlightening, or at least enjoy it, maybe a little enjoyable, or at least, at uh, the very least, tolerable, and hope you've learned a thing or two about how to solve um, for the roots of both uh, single equations and the intersections of equations, and how SMath handles some of these things, and as well as some of the uh, given uh, some of the nomenclature and some of the uh, issues with bounds and guesses and uh, initial guesses and things like that. 
So please let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer them. Um, and I'll see you next time. I'm still not finished up with this uh, series on SMATH. I think there'll be another few videos as they come as I work on, the, on them and they come along. Um, but so be on the lookout for those if you'd like to learn more about this program. All right, that'll do it for now. I'll let, go ahead and let you go. I just want to say I uh, hope you've enjoyed this and found this useful. And as always, thank you.